Oh yeah, Marilyn Monroe. Hey, what's up? Stay down, I'm in the afterlife now. Oh, you want a piece of this? Yeah, no problem. My name is King Allentown. I'm a legend slash icon. I'm from Allentown, Pennsylvania, the big city, the greatest city on earth. What do you do? Well, I'll put it this way. I had a hockey game at Whitehall Ice Arena. I showed up, I'm walking to the locker room. Some little kid from Parkland High School, I don't even know, while WFMZ there, points to WFMZ TV, says, that guy right there is the greatest Lehigh Valley legend ever. So pretty much that's my rep in the streets in the big city of Allentown. Yeah. I walked from off scene past it, you know what I mean? Yeah. So we're here at the Allentown Fairgrounds. Uh, before I was even a, on the internet and a social media sensation, I used to come here with my band and I would sell t-shirts and CDs. I would walk around this whole fairgrounds. I would just talk to every person I could. I would never stay still. I would just walk laps, walk laps. I would make a ton of money. I'd get tons of women's phone numbers. I was actually giving my phone numbers out to my friends, like of women I didn't want to talk to. I had so many. So I walked through with the, the glittery outfit and everything, and it, it attracts the regular boring people. And back then is when I was wearing the King Allentown mask, all right? So right now, I'm not even supposed to be here. I'm actually banned from the fair, but I don't think they know what I look like without the mask on, so we're just being a little low-key right now. They say I'm not allowed in here. Great right Allentown Fair, home of the stars. Home of the stars. This is Muhlenberg College. I've been arrested here three or four times. 
I gave one of the guys the finger and they cut me off and put me in some room and held me. Pretty sure I'm not allowed on campus. But you know, when you're a celebrity, people hate you. No one calls the radio station and says, Joe Sixpack, I really hate him. They call the radio station, they say, King Allentown, that guy got arrested at Muhlenberg a million times. I hate him. How is that possible? How are you, what were you, how were you on it? I was at Occupy Wall Street when it was down here, dude, oh. before the Phantoms blew, blew oh, up the whole area, dude. Yeah. And there were like all kinds of news people and they were like interviewing me because I dressed like this. So this is the actual shirt. I brought it from the King Allentown Hall of Fame. King Allentown Museum. This is the actual shirt from when I went to Judge Judy and won in my court case. I'm probably the only person in the Lehigh Valley to go to Judge Judy. And I'm definitely the only person to win. So that's that right there. I live in Allentown, which is kind of like an artist's paradise. The expectations are so low, you'll never be disappointed. So basically we have like, if you're in New York and they have a festival, that would be like a 10 in relevancy. Allentown, we have like these knockoff festivals of whatever's going on in a big city and they're like a one. So I would never go there and act like I was entertained because I'm not, because it's boring and it's for lame people and simpletons. But what I do is I go there, dress flashy like this, and I sell my shirts that I make myself. This is a King Allentown shirt. You know, you can see the resemblance there. I make these, I make eight town slut shirts, I sell them, I walk around, I give out my business cards. And I got banned from so many places that I actually made a replica of myself, Cardboard King Allentown. So, I mean, I'm not going to move. I got too good here. I got to establish, I, mean, I got women who will pay my bills just for hooking up with them, stuff like that. So I ain't going nowhere. The way I look at it is if you can't succeed in your own city, you ain't going to succeed nowhere else, man. You're damaged good. So there's no reason to move. You know, that's just how it is. So I'm just trying to make the most I can of living in Allentown. I'm pretty sure I'm doing it. Do, man. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, it's it's easy to look good. It's a lot harder to look bad. <laughs> Yo, you can interview them about me. He uh, he seemed pretty cool, but then you look at the guy and it's just like, huh? So, um, yeah. Uh, I guess he tries to be a rock star, um, but uh, no, he he's, he's he's all right in my book, I guess. He he's a he's a fellow freak, and uh, you know. Fuck everything, fuck everyone. I'm gonna do what the fuck I'm gonna do. So, uh, you know, <laughs> fucking Godspeed. Go ahead, babe. What do you, uh, what do you got? Uh, well, I think, uh, I think I me and him play played too. a show together a while back. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> it must be good when the students are watching you in Philadelphia and you're saying, fuck everybody, fuck everything. Yeah. That's it, that's it. There's a big crowd just waiting for me down there. We were here for about two minutes until we saw someone who knew me. That's how it is when you're a legend slash icon. All right, let's descend on it. Hey, can you put on King Allen's Town the album? Throw it off, bud. How you doing? What's up, man? Bacon Fest 2017. Uh, yeah, I'm shooting King Allentown, the documentary for the Philadelphia Art School. All right. Yeah. I came all the way from Allentown to be here. Oh, I'm working God. on a movie and a documentary right now. Oh, awesome. You know, we're getting shots. Hey. Oh, that's all real. That's all real. Look at that. I'm Don't let your man see this. Don't make him get jealous. Oh, oh trust me. I won't. I won't. I'm single. <laughs> all right. Let me get a spin here. Yeah. Can I win a date with myself? Anything is possible. You're right, you're right. Uh, Bacon Fest 2017. Yo, King! Oh, what's up, man? What's up, man? I got people everywhere. My sphere of influence goes much further than Allentown. It also goes to Easton and further parts of the Lehigh Valley. So, we're just doing the documentary here. We got bulldozers waiting for us. Oh, yeah. They gotta wait, because we're taking selfies here. That's right, we're taking selfies. We're taking selfies. That's just how it is, man. Taco Fest, 
I already got five dollars in a free CD. Everyone's staring. They want a they want a piece of it. They're curious, but I mean, they're, they're just not that bold. They're not that direct. That's why I'm up here and they're down here. I gotta get down to the, the gold shorts. The original producer and director of my movie, King Out Town, the motion picture. This was his house. He rented it out to me. The furnace broke. He didn't want to fix it. I said, I can't pay rent without heat. And I just lived there for like a year and a half until the bank paid me money to leave. The city actually paid people to come mow my lawn because I refused to do it. One day I was hanging out in the kitchen and I heard all this noise and I was like, what's that? I went outside, there were two Spanish guys mowing my lawn. They said the city paid them to mow my lawn. I said, hey, go ahead, man. I ain't gonna do it. Landlord, he stopped working on my movie. He said I was an idiot, et cetera, et cetera. Which is funny because before that, he, he was the one who wanted to make a movie about me. So, you know, he's real fickle. I know how it is. Even restored the houses, they, they ripped everything down. I had an army of cats living here. I had like three feral cats and a regular cat just hanging out. They just walked into the house whenever they wanted to. They knew how to get in under the foundation. Now this was about the beginning of the end right here. Over here is where the nasty boys, the pro wrestlers, they had a, a stand and they were trying to sell autographs and pictures, but no one knew who they were and everyone was running up to me and asking for my picture and my autograph. So the nasty boys got really mad and complained and told they told about me. We're at Sportsman's Cafe, the little Bowery. I'm up there, the A-Town Sluts, we practice here, we play shows here, you know what I mean? We're the only real punk band probably in America. Because we get thrown out everywhere, we do whatever we want. We don't answer to no one. Everyone hates us. I mean, does it get more punk rock than that? All right, it's the same fucking ones. Don't, don't catch me well, on recording talking like this. Oh, I'm playing a character here. So that's kind of the only thing we We'll go into that and uh, we'll work from there, right? We'll try to figure it out. Are you good? Am I in frame? I don't have time to get all of you So just introduce yourself and how you got into a time slot. My name is the Poppy Juan Cena, local pro wrestler, punk rock icon from the area. You know, when I was. 17 years old, the A-Town the Sluts, they needed a new bass player. They needed somebody to change the game, make it different, man. I didn't even know how to play bass. I didn't know how to play guitar. They handed me a bass that said, learn these songs. King, the Kingster gave me a bass, and Chris Peters showed me how to play it. And ever since then, I've been part of the mainstay, part of the crew, man, in the fold. Building my rep even higher and higher in Allentown, man. I say, never give up. Except, you know, you know, you're in school, we're at Ridge Avenue, Ridge and Gordon, Sportsman's Cafe, the official bar of the A-Town Sluts, the only place we're allowed to play. We're banned from every other venue in the area. Why are you guys banned? Uh, you know, I guess reputation precedes us. <laughs> get banned immediately because we come in real loud with the feedback pissing everybody off we'll go to local uh, open mic nights and they'll have an acoustic set before us they might be playing you know evanescence doing like a duet or something then we come in with the full cab and we start you know blasting away and people just you know they're not ready for that
listen, I live the life, man. I don't work. I get government money. You know what I mean? These other guys got jobs. They're playing punk dress up. They show up here with their jackets on and their mohawks. Not me, man. I'm always doing the same thing. Sometimes I look at myself. I say, you know, I don't work. I'm not really being that progressive in life. I don't have a wife. I make kids. I'm not really like building anything. But then I look at the people I know who do have kids and do have a wife, and they're not any further along than I am. They're not doing much better. I mean, they seem pretty angry and they don't like their life and they're bored. And like, I'm definitely not bored. I just don't have like a lot of money to just blow on frivolous, stupid stuff. If I had a job making a lot of money, that's all I would do. I wouldn't save the money. I would just blow it on crazy, frivolous stuff. Like, we'd have crazy scenes to kick out of the, the motion picture, you know? Maybe me, like, uh, skydiving in the stadium or something. You know, that Where are you taking that off? 20 pound weight vest, man. From Bulls Gym, you can put the weights in there. I mean, I'm buff, but I'm not that buff, man. Shit. Alright, head back in. And where are we? Bethlehem Municipal Ice Rink, man. Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, right next to Allentown. So yeah, you can probably go out around there, it'll be good. We have to slow some of them highlights down and put Young Jeezy on that shit, man. You know what I mean? Hit him with it. We can cut a commercial right now. Alright. I'm King Al, town the legend slash icon. So over here on my adult league boycott right now out here at Muni. I've scored 11 goals at four open hockeys, man. Staying in shape out here. And I want you and the family to just come down here for, you know, the holidays, man. Bring a loved one. Bring King Allen's out, man. See you there. Tap your foot or whatever. We used to hang out up here on my buddy's Uber's porch. And, uh, one of the nights of the eight town fair, he was getting all fucked up. And the next morning, the neighbor called me. He said, yo, Steve shot his girl. I said, what? He's like, yeah, Steve shot his girl last night. So I drove by up here and uh, there were bullet like things all over the ground. There was blood. Apparently his girl tried to take his kid. He came up to the door and shot her. Then he shot her again and took the kid and went back inside and had a standoff with the police. So here we go, Pulaski. That's the mayor of Allentown. That's one grade lower than King Allentown. After years of speculation, the other shoe drops for Allentown's mayor. We can now confirm that Mayor Ed Pulaski has been indicted in connection with an FBI probe at Allentown City Hall. He was under investigation by the FBI for taking bribes and shaking people down, but he still won, man. The strong arm tactics got him in. Pulaski was campaigning. He actually went door to door. He show up at my buddy's house, he actually knows me. He said, hey, he's like, does King Allentown really play hockey? Is he really good? And I play for this guy, I'm the best player on his team. He said, yeah, he said, he's great. So, you know, all the powerful people know me, you know, it's good, it's good to have powerful friends. I tell women that all the time. I'm uh, in Fortis and all of a sudden someone knocks at the door 
it's her baby's daddy who I actually know with a case of daddy ice, like a 30 pack, he's carried it around the town for business. And then he actually throws me a beer. He says, hey, you're sniping my tender. And I just got it left and let them sort it out. Down here with the great one, King of Town, the legend slash icon. This is Sports Fest, or where Sports Fest was formerly held. I wish I had a 40 to pour it out right now because they just canceled Sports Fest this week. Sports Fest was like the WrestleMania of Allentown. It was the biggest roller hockey event. They had basketball over there. They had pro WXW Pro Wrestling over there. A little court there to take your kids, you know. Well, last year I had King Fest, which was the biggest, most relevant foot hockey tournament in America. And we raised like a couple thousand dollars and we split it. One guy had a heart attack, we gave some of the money to his family. Then another guy, his kid died, so we gave him money. But it turned out that he killed his kid. So I wish we would have kept the money and gave it to me because I only got like $100 out of the whole thing. I did all the videos, the promotion, everything. But we're probably going to have a King Fest too this summer. Me and my board, we're going to try to go to Czechoslovakia with the Olympic team, man, the Olympic foot team. So we want to raise money for ourselves to train and fly over there. And that would be like King Fest 3, you know, back to our roots in Europe, man. But that's going to be like a month before Sports Fest. That's what we did last year. We had King Fest a month before Sports Fest. And then these other guys started their own foot hockey festival two weeks later based on what we did. But that's how it is when you're an innovator, man. I wish it was nice so we could be in those rowboats. I got a bunch of promos I wanted to shoot, but that's not going to happen. It's too wet. I would have one where I'm like against the wall and like my gear. And then we play HBK, Sexy Boy. You know that song, Shawn Michaels? It's like, da -da -da. he's like, I think I'm cute. It's like, I know I'm sexy. It's like, I got the looks that drive the girls wild. They see me walk. Oh they hear God. me talk. It's like, I make them feel. Like I'm on cloud nine, and the, re the refrain is, he's just a boy toy, sexy boy. It's like, I'm not your boy. He's like, hands off the merchandise. Then it comes back, he's like, I make them hot. Oh my he's God. like, they shiver. He's like, their knees get weak whenever I'm around. It's, the, it's my Tinder theme song, yo, sexy boy, Shawn Michaels. Yeah. What do you think his legacy is going to be when he leaves? It's going to be, it's going to be a lot of various opinions, but everybody's going to have an opinion, and that's the most important thing, you know. Uh, people are definitely going to look down upon him, but people are going to look up to him too. It's going to be, he's going to be remembered, I guarantee you that, no matter what, because there's never been another person like him. And his legacy on Allentown is very great, man. You can't deny it. People try and deny it, but it's undeniable. So right behind us is Blake Optical, uh, the owner. He has some some pump band, you know. 50-year-old man who sells Gucci glasses and makes 100000 a year has a pump band. You know what I mean? It sounds like a midlife crisis to me. What's their band called? Damn Dirty Apes. Look yeah. up their videos online, dude. You'll, you probably don't want, your, want, to, want, want to have your friends see you watch them because it's like, it really is that, like, awful. But it, it's interesting, to say the least. Sometimes you have to expose yourself to garbage, you know? Just wait there for a second. I'm just gonna